All right, now in the last of our presentations, that was number three in this short series on set theory, we introduced the idea of a subset. And we said that one set is a subset of another. We'll say that A, for example, is a subset of set B, just if all of the members in A, all of the members of A, are in B. Now, let's go back to the list of sets that we defined two presentations ago. And you remember there we did an exercise, and we were trying to determine in that exercise which of these sets, which among these sets were identical. And uh, we set out these ten sets, and we defined them like this. Now, let's now decide which of these sets is a subset of others or an other. Well, let's start with A and ask if that's a subset of any of these other sets. A contains just London, Paris, and the White House. Is there another set that contains London, Paris, and the White House? Well, B doesn't. B contains a set, specifically the set A. C contains the White House, London, and Paris. So everything in A is in C. So A is a subset of C. A is a subset of C. And while we're at it, we may as well note that everything that's in C is in A. So C is a subset, let's just write it here, of A. Now you remember what we proved two presentations ago, that if everything in A is in C, and moreover everything in C is in A, then there is nothing in either of those sets which is not in the other. And on that basis, we can conclude, it's a nice little proof, that if A is a subset of C and C is a subset of A, then A is equal to C. And indeed, that was a result that we obtained two presentations ago. D is the set which contains London, Paris, the White House, and we've written London and Paris again. But remember, a set is defined just by its members, not in what order they appear or how many times they're repeated in the set. So D is a set which contains the set A, but so is B. So everything in D, which is the set A, is also in B. So D is a subset of B. And moreover, by the same reasoning that we went through up here, B is a subset of D. And that gives us the result that B equals D. Now, what about E? E contains A and the set which contains A. Well, the set which contains A is F, so E contains F. But F is not a subset of E, it's a member of E, and that's a different thing. G is the set of all things which are either the capital of France, which is to say Paris, or the capital of Britain, or the official residence of the United States. Well, if I have something which is the capital of France, then it is the capital of France, and that's Paris. Okay, and then also if I have something which is um, the capital of Britain, that's London. Oops, that's supposed to be an O. London. And that's supposed to be a D. And the official residence of the United States is the white. I'm just going to abbreviate it here. W-H. And then H-O. That's the White House. So we've got here G, and there's nothing else which is either the capital of France or the capital of Britain. No other things which are meet any of those conditions. So G contains Paris, London, and the White House, which is exactly what A can contains and exactly what C contains, although C is has them written in a different order. It's what's in them, not the order in which they're written. So G is a subset of A, and G is a subset of C, 
and vice versa. I'm not going to write it out here, it would be tedious. A is because it's the same set as G is also a subset of G, and C is also a subset of G. Now we have H. Well, we, dis we determined that H was the empty set. Do you remember in the second of our presentations? And we write the empty set like that, a circle with a line through it. Okay, now let me just switch to a clean question sheet for the purposes of discussing these sets H and J. Both of them are the empty set, the one and only empty set. Now, uh, before I do that, let's just dispense with set I. Now, set I is the set of all X such that X is equal to A. Well, there's only one thing that is equal to A, and that's A. So another way of writing I is to say I is the set which contains as its only member A. Now, of what sets above is I a subset? Well, remember that any set is a subset of another if and only if everything which it contains is in that other. And we can say that everything that it contains, the set I, which is to say only A, is in F. So I is a subset of F. And of course, F is also a subset of I, because F, everything that F contains, which is just A, although it's written twice, is also in I. So in fact, uh, we'll say write this the other way around. F is a subset of I. What else? Well, I is a subset of E because everything that it contains is also contained in E. So I is a subset of E and moreover E contains something other than uh, I contains, which is to say I itself, because that's the set containing A. So I is a proper subset. We could take that out and just say I is a proper subset of E. Okay, now let me just undo those and focus for a moment on H and J the empty set. Let me just draw that in again. H and J are the same set, which is to say the empty set. Now, of what are they? Of what, which other of these sets are they subsets? Well, remember, a set is a subset of another if and only if, which is to say just if everything that is in that set is in the other set, the other set of which it is said to be a subset. Okay, now here is something that may be a little confusing to you, because H and J, being the empty set, sometimes we turn that the null set, have no members at all. It looks as though it may be undefined, whether or not H and J are subsets of any of these other sets. Well, let's just look at it another way, however. Let's suppose that we define a subset such that a set is a subset of another. Let's suppose x is a subset of y. Let me just write it down here. x is a subset of y just if there is nothing in x which is not in Y. Well, in that case, there being nothing at all in H and J, it's certainly true that there is nothing in H or J which is not in any of these other sets. So, what can we say? Well, H is equal to J, and I'll just say that that's the they're both the null set. And as a consequence, H and J, H and J, 
let's put them together over here are subsets of any set X of all sets why? because there is nothing in either H or J there is nothing in the null set which is not in any other set so H and J are indeed uh, proper subsets of any non-empty set. They're subsets of themselves, that is, it's, it's equal to itself, it's a subset of itself, but it is a proper subset of any non-empty set. Okay, now let's undo this and go back to our previous page. Well, let's just for interest define another set here. Let's define the set K and we'll say that the set K is that which contains London and Paris. Again, I keep asking you to please have patience with my writing. So K is the set which contains only London and Paris. And then I'm going to change color and let's just ask whether K is a subset of any of these things. Well, everything in K is in A, so K is a subset of A. And because A is equal to C, just like in arithmetic, anywhere where we write A we can also write C, so K is a subset of C. And because A is also equal to G, again, using the same reasoning, we can say that we can write K is a subset of G. Now, is A a subset of K? Is everything in A in K? Well, no, the White House is in A, but it's not in K. And therefore, it's not the case that A is a subset of K. And neither is it the case that C is a subset of K, and neither is it the case that G is a subset of K. Now remember, if any set is a subset of another, but that other set has things which are not in the first set, if it's bigger, in other words, than the first set, then we can say that that first set is a proper subset. It's not equal to, but it is a proper subset. So let's just change color yet again. We'll go back to the this bluey color. And so we can say that um, K is a proper subset of A without the line underneath here. And K is a proper subset of C, and K is a proper subset of G.